Hey everybody, welcome to Listen. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> welcome to Listen with Tania and Wynn. I am Tania Briscoe Easterling, in case you don't know. And I am Wynn Briscoe. <laughs> and we are sister cousins. And today you find out why we are sister cousins because our dads are twins and our dads are here live in the studio it's true. today. Wow. <laughs> so below me is my dad, James Briscoe on the East Coast and um, amazing. I think the oldest of the twins, but we're not sure anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and when who do you have beside you? And I have uh, my brother here with me, who is the youngest of the twins, allegedly. We're going to go with the alleged today. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, James and John, Dad and Uncle John. Welcome to the studio. Thank you guys for being Thank with you. us today. Thank you. Good evening. Good Thank to you see for you having us. <laughs> So thanks for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure you set your notifications um, so you know when we go live on our Facebook page, which is titled Listen with Tania and Win. I want to thank you so much for the continued support, all the views, the comments, uh, the feedback, all of the love. We have truly appreciated every bit of it. Um, and we are always looking for new topics. Uh, for right now, God has us doing topics that start with the letter F. <laughs> it's true. And they are interesting. <laughs> right. So if you have a topic uh, that you'd love to hear us discuss or talk about that we haven't already, uh, post it in the comments. And we'd love to hear that. So last week, for those of you that were not on with us last week, our topic was fitness, and we had the personal trainer and strong fitness owner, Danny Strong. Yes, and so that was episode 14, and today makes episode 15. Last week was so powerful. Um, just hearing his testimony along with his journey to fitness. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that, like Wynn said, it's so inspiring. Um, we won't even ruin it for you and tell you any of his story. You just need to truly hear it for yourself. Um, and then he also gives some great workout tips, right, Wynn, from last week. For those of us that are working from home or just at a desk all day long, we gave some great fitness tips in there. That episode last week was truly a mind body spirit because he hit on the whole person last week. He definitely right. talked about his story, how he has come from tragedy to triumph and overcome you know, major devastation in his life to where he is now and how his relationship with God has grown from that. And, um, and how he was really transparent to say at one point, he was really upset with God. So I loved how last week he shared his story um, and then also gave us fitness from an exercise perspective and right. nutrition. Right. So it was a full, well-rounded episode. Go back and check the replay. They always live on our Facebook page. You can go back and watch it anytime. Yes. Yes. So today, today's topic is on fatherhood. <laughs> In honor of Sunday, this mm -hmm. coming Sunday being Father's Day. Yep. So we could talk fatherhood all day long, but we thought what better idea than to bring our own fathers on the show? This is, <laughs> this is true, because who better knows about fathers than the fathers? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So if this is your first time tuning in, you are in for a treat today uh, and we will try to make sure that we let everybody talk because we're all talkers so <laughs> we will do our best we will do our best um and i see our cousin valerie popped on so hello back val 
Thanks for joining us, girl. Uh, so, so should we let our dads even just start off by telling them a little something themselves. about themselves? Like, say, can the fathers introduce themselves? Start with when? Uncle Jim, tell us about yourself. Hey, wonderful, praise the Lord. God bless. Oh, it's two wonderful young ladies here. We just thank God for y'all. Amen. And your progress and your and your growth. Amen. It just blesses my heart. I am uh, James Briscoe. I am the Bishop of Free Gospel Church of Brines Road and the presiding bishop uh, over Free Gospel Churches of the Apostles Doctrine. Uh, I am the husband of Ann Briscoe. Uh, been, a, been a husband for 50 years at November past. Thank God for 50 years. Amen. The father of three wonderful children. You see my eldest is on this program and then over here in Austin, Texas. Now my son is in is in Fort Myer, Florida with his wife and two children and my youngest is here in Maryland with us, her her husband and one more granddaughter. So we just thank God for what the Lord has done. Uh, we've retired. Uh, we put in 30 years with a major utility company here uh, in, in the DMZ. God spoke to me one day and I will never forget that. Uh, he said, go home and be a four tester. And me, God and I had a, we had, we had, we had a discussion to say, hey amen, I'm 52 years old. And he said, go home and be a full time pastor. After I'd worked my way up and thinking I am where I want to be, become the manager over a computer programming department, you know, that handled uh, a million customers. And then he said, go home and be a full time pastor. And I'm saying, why you say something earlier when I was, <laughs> I would be in the street doing whatever, amen, praise God. But he said, go home and be a full-time pastor. And I said, what's wrong with you? Have you checked the books? I make more money than the whole church. And then I I didn't want to be a Jonah, didn't want to end up in the belly of the whale and be, the third, be the third chapter of Jonah where he came right back and says, go to Nineveh, you know? So, uh, so uh, at 52 years of age, I left my job and came home to be a full-time pastor. And I tell you, when I stepped out of that door, I never left, I never been without a job. And I left out that door, and that door shut behind me that day. I felt so alone. I said, I'm walking off the steps. I'm saying, Lord, I'm in deep water and drowning is not an option. You know, so uh, so so walking across that parking lot was lonesome, you know, and uh, we had gotten through the year 2000. We had converted 1400 computer programs, you know, you know. Amen. Amen. So, so, so just telling you a little bit, amen, about myself. Amen. Praise God. So we came up through the sixties and data processing. So any of you that watched that wonderful movie some time ago, you can relate to where we are, where we were at that time. Thank you. I am out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Thank you so much. Amen. That was good. That was good. Uncle John. Uncle John. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Uncle John or Dad or whoever. I'm John Briscoe, uh, the husband to Marianne. Uh, we've been married for 52 years. My childhood sweetheart when we met in middle school. Uh, wow. I'm also the... Uh, Pastor and the Bishop of the Restoration Free Gospel Church here in Lexington Park, Maryland. I have uh, five wonderful children. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful uh, today. <laughs> uh, I thank wow. God for each one of them because they are special. They, they, they. We raised three families of children because they are so far spaced apart. So it was like, you know, you raised the first two and then uh, you had a break. And then the, the third one, which was Winnie, came along and she thought she was the special child because uh, we moved from a mobile to a house. And she said she wasn't mobile material. So that's why God had to build a house just for her. So, <laughs> And then as she's really glo gloating in the fact that she's the baby, uh, we wound up adopting two more, uh, which was, and they really were a blessing to us and, our, and what have you, because everybody came at a different time in our life. 
and it was such a blessing. They sometimes they thank me for being there for them, and I thank them for being there for me. Uh, what have you? So I, I've been pastoring now 15 years. I had that calling which I ran away from for years, and one day God asked me, said, how much longer should I wait for you? I got a whole flock waiting on you, and I didn't really want to be a pastor. I, I don't mind being the second, third, or fourth man back. I, I'm a good support person. I didn't want to be up front, so uh, I stayed in the back. I, I really didn't want to pastor, and, and, I, it's, and now it's one of the awesomest jobs I've ever had in my life. Uh, whatever. I put 37 years in the federal government. Before I, before I walked at the door and I walked at the door 30, uh, 15 years ago and never looked back, never missed it. Never, uh, you know, there were some folks that you enjoyed being around, but when I left one job, I went to another and I was fully engaged to that. So I thank God for all that God has done for me and my family uh, over these years. And like I say, 52 years of marriage to Mary Ann. And uh, what have you, she won't let me count out dating years, which pushes into 58 or something of that nature. But anyway, I count it all. I, I count it all joy. All right. So I thank you all for tuning in today. Amen. So great. So great. So, so yes, we, Wendy and I left off the fact that our dads are blessed to be pastors, but uh, I think. Don't, count it, don't hold it against us. No, no, but the, the oil truly flows down. So if you spend any time around Wynn and I, then you probably kind of figure somebody, somebody around us growing up. <laughs> and dad just pointed out last week, he said, so was Danny. And we talked about that, right? We said, we got to have yes. you back and we'll have a few other PKs on. Uh, yes. and maybe we'll have a, a PK gathering sometime in the future. It depends on how God points mm -hmm. that out where we we bring you know PKs together to be a support and encouragement yes. with each other because it's a whole different world out there when your parent is is in ministry. Yeah, truly, mm -hmm. truly. So today, everybody, we wanted to talk about fatherhood and just mm -hmm. have an honest conversation about it. So we'd love to ask our dads. Um, what was it like not having a father in your household growing up? John, you want to go first? No, you you first. And then <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yeah, to answer that question, we really didn't have anything to compare it with. Okay, so it's kind of like you don't really miss something that you never had. Uh, you know, I saw other children, you know, especially in school, uh, having mothers and fa fathers and mothers and, you know, we just had what we had and, and we didn't really look at it any different. I appreciate the fact that we were with my, our grandfather, my mother's father, in the house with us. So he played that role of dad. And I tell you, he was a blessing to us. We really became attached to him, you know, and he would drag us everywhere. Or at least he would, we would, we would latch on to him. He had an old saying. <laughs> He had an old saying that we didn't understand at that time. He said, you boys ain't nothing but pullbacks. And, you know, I didn't know at that time what he meant. But as we got older, then we realized he couldn't do as much as he wanted to do as fast as he wanted to do it with these two twin boys hanging on to his pants leg going everywhere. So, so we really appreciate him being that father figure in our life, taking us out there. He was a waterman, so he crabbed in the summertime and oystered in the wintertime. And, uh, you know, and so he taught us a lot to do, a lot of things to do. He taught us how to do things. We were the youngest of a mother's four sons, you know, so uh, so we were the babies. So uh, so he dragged us everywhere. I mean, Gilbert and Freddie was, you know, they were older. They were out, down, off doing their things, you know, but uh, but I thank God for my grandfather. Amen. He was the he was a role model in my life, you know, that I could see as a man, you know, and, and I really appreciated that. That's good. That's good. What about you, Uncle? Bouncing off, bouncing off uh, what my brother talked about with our grandfather. <clears throat> and I, I wrote down a note that I had a grandfather and uncles. And as we grew up with our grandfather being around, the man that's in our life was awesome because he was the only man that we knew 
uh, that was related to us. Uh, what happened? We had a father that was in the area, but not a father to us. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, we would see him daily sometime, but had no connections with him at all. And he had no connection with us. But I had, uh, I tell people right today, I thank God for my grandfather, but also as I grew up in my adolescent years and coming into my teenage years, I had an uncle, a favorite uncle, uh, Uncle Isaiah. And and I also had a a, a cousin that I, that really wasn't, I, I kind of called him an uncle to me as well. But both of these men were married with families. And when I needed to learn what a husband and a father was like, those two men impact my life a lot. Uh, one was uh, my cousin Dick, we called him cousin Dick, uh, what have you, he was uh, my mom's first cousin from, uh, from, my grand, from my grandfather's brother's lineage. But I hung out with his house a lot and being around him to see him come in from work and how the wife and children honored their father when he would come in and what have you. And then my uncle Ozzie was what was a, we called a road dog. He loved traveling. And I, I, he taught me a lot of highway traveling, a lot of things to do and a lot of things that, that don't do and what have you. And I really learned from these two men. He, both of them was married with their families and what have you. Uh, Uncle Ozzie's son that, that was, was a, in our age group, we called him Zeke. But he really taught, he would, he would call me up sometime even after I got married and my wife and I said, come on, ride with, my, ride with Aunt Mary and him to DC or wherever they would go and what have you. And, and I always loved to sit behind the driver because I wanted to see how the driver performed. And what I so I was I was really blessed to sit behind him and watch over his shoulder and just to see how driving and what have you and, and watching him and uncle and cousin Dick growing up with families, them two men really as I got older in my adolescent years and teenage years was really a blessing to me because I, I they became my father figures to, to pattern after. And and I tell their families right today, their his uh his daughters and, and sons and all that, their father was really my impact. They, he really impacted my life. Yeah. That's, That's good. That's good. I had no clue who Isaiah was until you said Zeke. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, Isaiah, Isaiah, I called the father, and Zeke, I called the son. Mm -hmm. No, it's perfect. I just, that. All these, all these family nicknames and everything. I know, I know, I know so many of our extended family mm -hmm. by nicknames, right? When I'm just you like, don't know government names by any means. no, when they use their government name, I'm like, who is that? <laughs> you person? Zeke was yeah. my cousin, and Uncle Isaac was with, my uncle, with the his father. Dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I love that both of you all mentioned Pop Ball uh, being. Mm -hmm an inspiration and a role model but i have a random question y'all spent all those years on the water you can't swim because water was work you know what water was not play y'all yeah. look at many of the day look at water as play play water was work in the summertime they worked they 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 harvested crabs in the winter time they harvested oysters mm -hmm. so every time we went to the water we didn't go to the water to play we went to the water to work. Mm -hmm. you know? and now, so, now, now, Jim, oh. let them know that when we was taken out there in the winter time, oh, yeah. they oyster that the the wooden tongs or the sticks that they put down in the water to to to, to rake up the oysters with. It's so cold that when the sticks is coming up of the water, ice is making on them at that time. Yes. As as water's running down, it's freezing. So. When when Papa all says, "Boys, pull up the anchor, let's go home," it was a happy time for us. <laughs> his, his thing that you get in the boat and you you go to put on a glove to work work with an old rubber, rubber glove. Said the glove is cold, boys. Stick it overboard and fill it full of water, and then put your hands in it. And, yes. and to us, flush wise, no, that's crazy. Why would you fill it full of water and then put? But it turned well, out the water was warmer than the uh, than the air. Well, in the air. Yeah, well, you put the glove in the water and put your hand in the water, so they yeah. both were the same temperature. And then you would, the glove was in the boat overnight, so yeah. it was still wet from the day before inside. 
And so he would tell you to put both in the water, your hand and the glove. Wow. And so they become the both, they become the same temperature. Yeah. And so when you put the old cold wet glove on, you didn't you couldn't tell that it wasn't warm because your hand and the glove was the same same temperature. That's because yeah. the glove in your hand and your brain was all delusional at the same time. Well, it's like sticking your foot in the pool. It's like sticking your foot in the pool. And you stick your foot in the pool and the water's cold. But if you go ahead and dive it's, it's, in, then and everything acclimates quickly. But we're not talking yeah, about yeah. Texas cold. We're talking yeah. East Coast cold. So we're talking 30-some yeah. degrees easily. Oh, yeah, less than that. Oh, yeah, yeah. less than that. Because if, if yeah. the water's freezing on the tongues as they pull them up at the water, as they pull yeah. them up, ice is making. Mm. So yeah, he I mean, had, the air is so cold that it's freezing it as it's running down. He had the largest boat. So the rest of the men could not get out until he left because his boat would break the ice. Wow. Of, of the the ice of the river, so they followed him out because he had the largest boat. So I mean, this was no playtime. We were, we, I'm talking about when the water, when the river had frozen, you know. So so we're not talking about a little little pond of water in your backyard. We talking about the whole so river. Y'all really were James and John out in the boat. Yes, with, with Peter. 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 Okay, with Peter. Yeah. really what it was. Okay. Hey, what can I say? Did y'all see Jesus <laughs> anywhere out? On the world. Hey, hey, we knew he was there. Okay. <laughs> we we were the we were the disciples that stayed in the boat. We did not the ones that walked on the water. How about that? So does that answer your question, today? That did. That did. It was a great. It was a perfect answer. Perfect yeah. answer. Yeah, we call him Pop Ball. Pop Ball, Mr. Frank James Ball. But we call him Pop Ball. Amen. So so when you when you don't sometimes have those fatherly examples at home, where else can men um, draw wisdom from? Like where else can they can they get those examples of fatherhood? Well, for myself, as other than John, it's interesting because. I looked at John and I as the Gospels for Peter. I mean, where you know, where you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they both they both saw the same thing, but saw it differently. You know, where John looked at the uncles and others, I looked at I looked at Papa mostly. So 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 all of my early days and wisdom and all was with him. How he held money, how he saved money. You know, how he talked about. For the rainy day, because truly it was a rainy day, because when it rained, they did not go or string or crabbing, you know, and how he would keep money folded up in his wallet, you know, and I mean, the, he said, you always keep something for the rainy day. So he really taught us how to conserve and how to save, you know, stuff like this. So, so, so he was instrumental in my life. So the wisdom came by him. And, un and unfortunately, he had no wife at that time, even though he had been married three times, his first two wives, which includes my grandmother, which was the second wife, had died off having children. And his third, uh, she was, she kind of disappeared. Okay, so so we never, we never knew him. We never knew him having a wife, you know, never, never, you know, so, uh, so, so, but just his wisdom, just his wisdom of how he carried us and Toward us and showed us different things, you know. So, uh, so, but as as far as me caring for uh, a family, the fact that my father wasn't there, it moved on me at an early age that no matter I was going to get married, I made it up in my mind at a very young age that I was going to be there with my children. That I was going to be there. I was going to come hell or high water. I was going to stay, and I'm going to be there for my. So I had an attitude. If well before I became of age, even to get married, that I'm gonna that I'm gonna get married, I'm gonna have a family, and I'm gonna hang in there, whatever it takes, regardless of whatever it takes, I'm gonna hang in there, amen. And so we thank God for 50 years. Yes, and thank you for hanging in there, right? <laughs> right. So, Dad, the same thing. What do you? What would you say people can draw? Men can draw wisdom from um, to have a fatherly example in the home. Even right today in the church and in the neighborhood, I encourage uncles and cousins to be in, uh, an influence in their nephews and nieces' life and to be also not only be an influence, but be respectful because they have no father. If you're the father image, 
be the father image to them. I, I tell them, I have a little saying that uh, if a man's zip is down or his collar's up, messed up, or his necktie is not good, always never let a man look bad. If you're another man and you and you see his stuff out of place, then help him to get his stuff in place. So never let another man look bad. Because when one man look bad and they make fun of him, we all look, you make fun of all of us. So if you a man, then uh, help another man to be a man and to take these young men today and girls. Girls, the, one of the greatest impacts in their life is a father. And if they don't have a father uh, yeah. in their life to look up to, then the uncles, be there for them. Be there for them. Influence them. Tell them, tell them how they look. Uh, encourage them to do good. Support them in whatever they, they're doing. Uh, a word of encouragement means a lot. It means Amen. a lot. And I pray today I got a lot of nieces and nephews in my life that that their fathers are not there. And I try to be a father figure to them. And, and sometimes it's in teaching them how little tricks and driving. Sometimes it's, uh, in fact, I just had a, a nephew that uh, we were remodeling the house and he came and worked with me, I guess for about a month uh, or a month and a half of days, you know, in between that every day. And he said, Uncle John, I've never driven a tractor. I had him on my tractor uh, using the bucket and things. He said, I've never rode a ride more. He's only cut grass with a, a weed eater and all uh, push more. And he's 47 years old. Mm. And, I, and, wow. and, and he said, I've learned so much being here with you and the uh, carpenter and remodeling our, the, our home. And at 47 years old, he said, I really appreciate it. You, you being here with you you know i had to go and get it the car wasn't working and what have you so early morning the the the, the builders there by 7 30 i gotta go 15 miles to get you and, and be back in time to be there for the builder and things of that nature so just for him to make that statement that i've really been an impact in his life at 47 Praise God. at 47 and he never, never handled any of this stuff you know and uh, what have you? And I said, now if you be quiet, you'll learn a lot. <laughs> because when the, when the builder is talking and what have you, you be quiet and listen to what he's saying and be right there with him. So don't go off somewhere else, be right there. Yeah. So it means a lot to have hmm. uncles. And you got to want to pick up from a man. Mm -hmm. uh, you can pick up from whatever you're around. You can pick up from the buddies in the streets. And, and we didn't do that. We, we didn't have a lot of buddies in the street. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my brother and I, I guess we were buddies to each other. Being yes. mm -hmm. And uh, what have you. So you, you, we didn't pick up from buddies. Uh, there were other fathers around that our friends had fathers, but we didn't. Uh, we, we didn't have a father figure close by. So I, I, and like I said, when I became adolescent, my uncles was really impact because like you said, my grandfather uh, didn't have a wife at the time and we learned a lot from it and what have you. Uh, but when I came into them later years, I learned from them that uncles and that cousin that was married meant a lot to me. Amen. Yeah, the value of mentorship, I think is so under yeah. valued um, male and female. Yes. Yeah. They need to see it in action. It's one thing to tell someone, but it's nothing like active mentorship where you can bring someone alongside you and say, let me show you life versus right. let me tell you life. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's so true. And, and the earlier you're blessed to start it, the better. Um, yes. Like what John said, it's never too late. It is never too late. Um, one, one, thing I like to hear, one thing I do like to share as being a pastor in a church and, and my twin brother and I both. And, I, and I, I've always told the young men that's connected with me in the church. I said, it's a funny thing that God puts us here as pastors and we've never had father figures. Mm -hmm. And what, what shocked me the most was that my both of my assistant pastors has no had no father. Mm -hmm. The one I got now, his father passed when he was five. Mm -hmm. The other one had never had a father at all. And I said, now God has got to teach us how to be fathers, husbands, pastors, all yeah. of them, and not have a living example in the house. That's right. 
Mm. Amen. Mm. That's good. That's good. Mm. That's good. <laughs> because God gave you what you needed in the other men that he surrounded you with. Because yeah. there are some that might have had a man in the home that he might not have been a father. That's right. Yeah, you can have sometimes we interchange those things of presence versus reality, you know. So it's good that God gave you all the father figures that you needed, even in the absence of the physical person in the dwelling. Yep. That's good. Amen. That is good. So good. Now, now the other thing that really helped us a lot was balance off was that our mother had no mother. Her mother passed when she was three. That's right. So she she's she's living with her father. And I used to tell her one day we'd be riding in the car and I said, Mom, the girls had a problem with you because really you don't have you don't have a woman's spirit. That's right. You've been raised by men. That's right. So when she has four boys and no daughters she she's a very strong she's a very strong she was a very strong mother yes and had very strong work ethics and very strong in-home ethics she she made sure we learned everything in the house and out the house yeah you know, she had four, four boys that now know how to cook clean bottle wash cut grass maintain the car whatever has to be done and now i want to learn to cook at home and when he went to the military i'm gonna say i made him a cook made him a cook <laughs> so she would go from house to house to feed or to eat you know where, wherever she wanted to go she knew her, one of her sons was cooking well, um, well yes they cook, they cook so, well. well our mother, our mother yeah. never had a mother to learn from so, so she, she learned, learned from a father yes she did yes 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 amen we thank God for we thank God for our mother because she played a she played a major role in our life. Yeah, you know, being being there. I mean, she was there, and I mean, she was involved, and she taught us the best she could, as John is saying. Uh, we would tell every now and then that you need some daughters, you know. And uh, but uh, but nevertheless, she put she put her skill set in us. You know, she said always oh, said you may marry a woman that don't know how to do anything. So she taught us she taught us how to do everything inside and outside of the house because she had to take care of four, 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 four boys. And I mean, mom is 19 with four children, four children at 19, you know? And uh, so, uh, so she had her hands full and she, she played that role of a father and mother in our life. But her, her mentor was her father because her mother died uh, having childbirth at childbirth with her younger brother. All righty. Mm, yeah. But, but clearly God blessed her to do an amazing job because none of y'all have ever been incarcerated. Oh, she no. didn't have to put y'all in a grave early. I mean. She beat, beat us to death. Uh, <laughs> no, she no. beat you straight. <laughs> she just helped you along. She just oh, helped yeah. you along. I'm telling you. <laughs> Yes. Yep, yes, she was, did. Yep, 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 yep. She was a she was a great woman. Amen. And when you see a tree, a young tree that's planted in someone's yard or somewhere, and they got little sticks strapped to them to keep them straight, that was her philosophy. If it took little sticks to keep you straight, she was a high believer in little sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and don't play with them. <laughs> No, grandma was not to be played with. She kept that switch on top of the refrigerator. I remember. Yes. We didn't say nothing about a switch, but oh, we you, knew, didn't play, but you didn't play with it. It was it was like the old church altar. Get off the altar, boy. You don't play on the altar. You didn't play with that switch. No. No, no, no. No. We never ever played with the switch. Uh and still don't. Yeah. Still don't play with the switch. I cannot she, look at a tree and not yeah. think about <laughs> Yeah. She, she she like you said, she never she never had she never had any trouble out of us, no major trouble. No. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. good. Thank That's God. Good. So yeah. um so what are do you, Dad and Uncle John, do you all have any examples of fathers in the Bible? Mm. Um that you feel were great examples and maybe one that wasn't so great. 
don't talk about the sacrifice. You know, we thank you for the rain. Hey. Don't do it. Hey. When it comes to, when it comes to fathers, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do a, a two part thing here. Uh, when it comes to father, and I've always thanked God for making me a man. You know, making me a man because I wanted to be a provider. You know, and I love those three P, those three P's: a priest, a provider, and a protector. Mm -hmm. You know, all the things that you know that God that I could have been a female or a male. I said, Lord, I thank you for making me a male because I wanted to be a provider. You know, and I've always told your mother. I said I wanted to be married. I wanted a wife. You know, and uh, and 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 I brought her home off the job after 14 years of her being on the job, and had made quite well on the job, but I wanted to be that provider. I wanted her to be home. You know, she's a GS-12 and I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging her to come home. And May was a wonderful month when we look back at the month of May because that was the month that I came home off the job 21 years ago. It was Memorial Day weekend and I never went back. And uh, she came home in the month of May to have Karee in June and uh, the doctor put on bed rest, you know, uh, until June. You know, but she came home in May, and uh, and I wanted to be that provider, and uh, and she challenged that thing. But God blessed me financially on my job that I made twice of what she was making. You know, doubled my, uh, tripled my income. You know, so she was home to be a full time mother. You know, when you really look at, so I like those three P's: the provider, the protector, and the priest. But when I really look at, you know, the characteristics of anybody in the Bible, I really like to look at the Book of Proverbs where Solomon talks about sons, you know, and, and I mean, in those first 13 chapters of Proverbs, Solomon just lays out things for the son with wisdom and, you know, you don't forget the instructions of your mother and, and all of that. And, you know, I love yes. Proverbs. I love Proverbs. It was, it's a great lesson. So to find a, a, a single person in the scriptures to point to, I, I didn't have a single person, but I just love Proverbs, how Solomon laid that thing out for a son. You know, so maybe John has this particular person. So who is your, who would you think is a good representation of a father in the Bible? Uh, when I look at it right now, last month in the church, we taught on virtuous woman. We taught, since it was Mother's Day month, we taught on women the whole month. And I told the men, don't worry about it, because when June comes, being a Father's Day month, we're going to teach on men the whole month. So you out there uh, in social media, we... Our, my key verse was Proverbs 20 and 6 was who can find a faithful man? Mm. Proverbs 20 and 6. Well, so a lot of times, and I taught this starting at first Sunday, that don't look for a good looking man. Don't even look for a good man, but look for a faithful man. Now, I remember when my mom and my dad got ready to get married and she came, this came out of her own mouth. And she says she went to my grandfather and she told my grandfather that I think I'm a married Jack. Well, by this time we grown. And my grandfather says, well, he's a slang. He's a scoopy tanky little thing, which means he wasn't something, he wasn't <laughs> easy on the eyes, you know, wasn't good looking, ears kind of set off and what have you, small figure. <laughs> And things, but he said this. He was a scoopy thinking little man, but he's a hard worker. And sometimes we have to look not at the pretty, because the scripture says all of this stuff is vain. All this stuff will fade away one day. The six packs gonna fall into a big belly, and you know, and all this other stuff that you gloating with today, or the pretty teeth might become uh, uh, postulant and a jaw. You know, all that bush and pretty hair might come down to a right. ball, you know? So, but uh, if I had a man to look at biblically, as then the bishop says that, and I look up to my brother, I, I really do honor my brother. Uh, I was thankful tonight that the questions didn't put us against one another because I refuse to play that because I look up to him for everything. So, uh Giving him that, he, he talks about me being a talker, but I do give him that in my talk that I honor him <laughs> and all the things that I will never put myself above him or not even equal by no means. Yeah. So anyway, but if I had a, a man to look at in the Bible, he, he talked about Solomon and my number one man in the Bible that I look at was David, mm -hmm. Solomon's father. And why? Because David was real. David 
none of us live a, a fantasy life. Right. There, there's, there's good, the bad, the ugly. We done been through it all. So none of us is perfect fathers, yeah. you know, whatever. We all got a past. We all got things. And, and when I came into ministry uh, 15 years ago, God dropped this. He told me this and he told me straight up. He said, I got a whole flock waiting on you. And how much longer should I wait? And he said, you start the church and I want it named restoration because the day you can't restore somebody, I'll pull the cover off for you. Mm -hmm. To let me know that I'll never be there to condemn somebody, to run somebody else's down. My yeah. job is always to restore. So if I look at a father figure in the Bible, I look at David because David did everything that a man, and as the bishop said earlier, I thank God for being a man because I want to be a provider. I want to be a husband. I told my I told my wife when she came off from the job, uh, the doctor had taken her off of the job for a while and she wanted to go back and I said why would you go back and she said well we need the income I said you've been off for a year year and a half we haven't lost the thing That's right. so looking at the men the uncles and the cousin I told you about we was we, we had looked at being providers and protectors and what have you and that's where we, that's where I was I, I I looked at David I looked at my uncles and what have you and my grandfather and just like my mother said my grandfather said to my mother, he's a scoopy tanky little thing, but he's a hard one. <laughs> and it meant a lot to, even though I got to be with him the last five years of his life, yes. he said we built that, we went to build mom and him a new house together. And working with him meant a lot to me. I learned a lot from him, even at the 40s, even at the age that he was at the time. And he's 60 something and, and I'm, I'm in my early 20s. And what have you, but I still learned a lot from him because the day that I met him, I called him dad. And I've That's never right. called him anything else but dad. Yeah. So whether he was there for me for those 20 some years or not, I never disrespected him. That's I right. honored him as dad. If he wasn't there, that's between him and God. Yeah. But I honored him as dad and I called him dad and I respect him as dad and that's what right. have you. So Amen. he went into the grave, me calling him dad, and I missed him. And there were times when we went to build the house and he wasn't there. And I said, Dad, if you was here, you wouldn't know what to do. So I had to learn. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's yeah. so good. That's so good. That you <laughs> what did you say, when? I said, that story always makes me cry. Yeah. I, I, I never heard that part where, where our grandfather referred to him. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, ne I never heard that part because I never knew my father and mother was even dating. When I left in October 1968 to go to Vietnam, to me, they were nowhere together. And, and, and by the time I got back in October 1969, I come home to, to a father in the house and I'm looking at their marriage stuff and they, they, they get their marriage license in March and, and, and get married in March. And I'm saying, I mean, within this year, I mean, mom and dad then got together and got married. Now I'm coming home to a house full of parents. You know, as John is saying, that that uh, that we never knew. I mean, I turned 21 in Vietnam. You know, so so for 21 years I never had a father in my life, my natural father anyway in my life. So those last five years, uh, from from 69 well, to 75 when he passed, uh, we were there, and my mother never tore him down in our presence. We always knew him as dad. We always referred to him as dad. And so those last six to, to, to six, maybe five and a half years uh, were just wonderful having him with us, you know. And I, and but I but I took what he did and I turned it into a positive sense that I will be there for my children, you know. So 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 that that caused me that didn't cause me to go backwards and go down. That caused me to step up higher. You know, so so thank God for that. Amen. That's good. Wow. That's awesome. Well, understanding the importance of a father's impact and on their children and future generations. Yes. Speak to that. What you feel? I know Tania and I use the term the ripple effect 
quite often on the show. So speak about the impact and the importance of a father's uh, impact in his children, you know, for future generations to come. That legacy, yeah. what does that mean? Well, I love Proverbs 13, 22, where it talks about a good man yeah. leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And, and, and that, that's, that's my goal, you know, to gather as much as I can, you know, in my lifetime. And I don't care even at, at John's age of 73 years of age. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if, I, if I can keep gathering, I'm going to gather. Amen. Praise God. So that, so, because there's one thing in our race of people is, is generational wealth. Is, I mean, is, uh, you know, gen, generational stuff. Oftentimes we don't have stuff to pass on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. You know, you live in by day by day, you know, and sometime even in our race, somebody got to help to bury you. You know, we've had family members that are, that pass, you know, and I mean, they were full grown adults and you had to go around to the family with the, with the head out, you know, cause we got to bury uncle this or cousin that. They had no insurance back in them days. I mean, they were watermen, fishermen or whatever. There was no such thing as insurance and stuff. You know, and but they lived a loose life, and many of them died, you know, with no substance, you know. And uh, but uh, but I wanted to make sure that when that I would gather as much as I could gather, you know, invest, find out how to invest in in this, because I wanted Proverbs, I wanted Proverbs thirteen twenty two in my life. That when I stepped away, uh, there was uh, John Avizini used to come to our church and preach. And he was he would teach on he would teach on wealth and stuff of this nature. Bishop Green didn't bring him in to preach salvation. He brought him in to teach wealth, you know. And uh, he, he he made a statement one night. He said, "When I die, I want my children, amen, to cry at that funeral and cry, you know. But when they get home, I want to I want to hear them say, Wow, look at what Daddy left for us, you know.'" <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a little loud, I know, but that's but that's what he said. He said, "I want them when they when they get off to themselves and see what Dad had left for them. I wanted them to holler, not cry, but holler. You know, and that's my. I want to. I want to. I want as Proverbs thirteen says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Amen. So that that's that's what I feel is that as that next important thing." You know, give them as much as I can in wisdom and advice, you know, but leave them something as well. So they don't have to start off where we started off. I mean, we started off, as John and I said, we started off with no father. We started off with no income. We would go in, in the street and find soda bottles that was worth two cents to turn them in. And we would go find soda bottles in the summertime and bag them up, a hundred bottles in a bag, a, a grass sack, and what you would get feed in. And we would store them up in the shed. So we would. So when it was time to go to the basketball game at night, it cost you twenty five cents to ride the bus, twenty five uh -huh. cents to get in or the sock hop at school. We yeah. would take a hundred bottles to the store and get two dollars, you know, and we split the two dollars. I had, you oh, know, so, wow. so 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 we was industrials back there in that day, gathering up soda bottles because we knew winter time was coming, and mom did not have the excess money to give us money to do things you know and in fact when we still we started earning money mom would take mom would take uh everything she no she'd get that she got up to half but eventually i mean she would take everything but five dollars five dollars she would take everything but five dollars she said now if you want to buy your if you want to buy your next year's school clothes i need i give you half but i'm going to take at least half and if you want half then you buy your own Next season, school clothes out of your half. Um, I'm a terse half, you know. But other than <laughs> if she's gonna if she's gonna do everything, she's gonna give us five, and 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 she kept the rest. And five, we can splurge it any way we want. Yeah, you can waste that. that. Was working, and that was working at the crab house in the summer. And we would go there the, the day after school closed, and the day before school opened, we were there in the crab house every day, and we would give her our whole. It wasn't no check. It was a brown envelope with cash in it. You know, she would take the whole cash and give us five bucks or give us half if we're going to buy our own clothes. Wow. <laughs> I have never heard the story. Five dollars back then was a lot of money to waste. Yeah, man, it was a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, she said, take that five dollars if you're going to waste it. You know, well, like like the bishop said about the one dollar. Now, look at this here. Now, this time I'm, I'm, I'm dating your mom. 
I could take that $1. It, yeah. it cost 25 cents to ride the bus to school, to the game, or the sock hop, or whatever it was. Took 25 cents. That was my transportation because she lived right next to the school. So 25 cents got me to the school. It That's took right. 25 cents to get into the game. So I paid for her and myself to go into the game. I'm up to 75 cents. Right. Popcorn, drink, uh, Kool Aid, or whatever cost five cents. So we yeah. could buy five different items. <laughs> so I could tell you, look what look what you did with that dollar. That dollar was industrious. That that dollar. Dollar. <laughs> look at that dollar. Look at that dollar. We could buy two two bags of popcorn, two drinks, and still have still have a nickel left over to do another item, whatever. Come on, dollar. But, but that's what you did with that dollar. But I, like I said, consider the anti-slugger. We 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 were taught through Papa all and through Mom not to waste money. Yeah. Not to waste money to put money away, and yeah. what have you. Consider that tomorrow's coming, and whatever. Yeah. So I I thank God for that. I I, I when I had I told my mom one day because her and I rode around a, a lot because I'm I'm right in the area where the bishop uh, was in the area after we got married. I, I'm sight I can see her house from mine. And uh, I just put side windows in my house. And I remember her saying one day, y'all need windows in the side so I can tell when y'all is up. You know? <laughs> so, when you, so when you got the lights on, I can tell, you know, cause she couldn't see, on that side of the house was just a wall. She couldn't see it. But I, so in this remodeling, I just put two side windows, but you know, she won't see them. But anyway, I remember I told her one day, I said, mom, I feel like this, when dad died, you chose not to remarry. Mm -hmm. I said, there's two choices. There's a choice to marry and there's a choice not to marry. It's a cost to both. I choose the cost to marry and to remarry or do whatever I have to do because I I, I, I love the fact of being married. So with that in mind, when it comes down to the question again, uh, yeah. about the, the, impact. Impact, the, impact, the impact of fathers, in your children' life, children, daughters, especially daughters, and daughters. both of them needs to know that they're the man there that they can that they can look up to, and that's a man that set an example. So when the daughter go to look for a man, a yes. lot of times she, as much as the, I, I look at daughters nowadays, they they really don't want fathers to uh, question or be uh, 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 what have you over the men that they choose because they feel as though that they, 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 they can make their own uh, choices and what have you. But when I look at a, a mother, a mother will look at a, a female coming into her son's life and she'll say, don't marry her. Don't marry her. She, 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 she's not good for you. Well, it's the same thing when it comes down to fathers. When fathers can judge a boy, judge, judge another man. And whatever, but sometimes the daughters don't want the fathers to put an input, but they look at it. They don't look at his good-looking teeth, his fine hair, his six-pack. They looking at what kind of a man or what kind of a father he'll be. She right. looking at that he got pretty teeth. He'll make pretty babies, and whatever. We ain't worried about babies. We worried about what kind of a man he would be. That's right. And, 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 and when, when I look at raising three daughters. You know, and, and my heart goes out to my daughters for the men that they choose because I want them to have good men. But if they don't allow the fathers to have an input in, then their their choices has been made. And as the old folks so sometimes you have to live with the choice you made or That's do right. otherwise. But I, I, I look at all my daughters now and I say, Lord, I would love to have an impact in their next choices, you know. And what have you? Because we don't. None of us want to see our daughters hurt. Amen. And we want to see that that good decisions are made. Because a man can look past the surface of a man to see. Like my grandfather said, he's a scoopy thinking little thing, but he's a hard worker. You know. <laughs> as, as Proverbs twenty and six says, a faithful man yeah. who can find. Who can find. So speaking of daughters. You want to share what it's like raising a daughter? What What do you need as a father to raise a daughter? Lord have mercy. <laughs> mercy, there you go. Lord have mercy. You're going, you're, going, you're going back to the peas. And this is a pea that wasn't in the peas. Patience and love. Oh, that's good. You know, patience. Patience is number one. This goes with children, period. 
you gotta have patience. Amen. You gotta have patience. And 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 a lot of it. And a lot of it. So 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 but uh you know, I appreciate raising daughters. I appreciate raising uh, you know, both our children, uh, you know, all both daughters and the son, you know, because you're putting you're putting yourself into them as well as your mother's putting yourself, putting it herself into them. You know, and de- helping to develop them. I appreciate the fact that when the three of you guys left our house, that that we could we could tell the world that pe- that three young people are coming out there into the world that's been exposed to character. You know, we're not turning some crazy folks loose on the world that the world wish. You know, wonder what in the world happened to them. So 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 we thank God for you guys' development. You know, but uh, but we we, we it was a wonderful opportunity. To raise you, and I was glad that mom was home, you know, uh, to be there with y'all. You know, I think she came when she came home with Kare. I think Katania, you may have been around four at that time. I was Maybe seven. Four. You were seven. You Kare were seven and I were seven there. years apart, so I was okay. seven. Seven, and then, then James was five. You know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and so, so mom was there with y'all all of those young years. So, so yeah. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. She's a brother. She's a praying woman. So she was there, you know, while I'm off working, you know, because there was times when I was out of the house for three years, uh, out on the, uh, the company had me out, out in uh, other locations that I had to stay for the whole week, you know, and uh, two, other, two other sites. And mom was there with y'all for those three years that the company had me up in Frederick or up in Winchester. And I just stayed up in those two locations for three years developing systems up there and they're coming home on the weekend. So I thank God for, for mom being there as well. Well, I, I love that you said that you re- y'all released us because you did train us up in the way that we should go. Yeah. Um, but we couldn't come back anyway because y'all changed the locks. So we couldn't come back <laughs> if we wanted to. Wow. <laughs> for the record. <laughs> Now. <laughs> Did we change the locks? <laughs> hey, hey, we, we, hey, John, we gave him the down payment on places. We gave him the down payment on places, the condos, you know, uh, James, yeah. uh, Karay, going to college, and she wasn't satisfied with just us doing the college thing. She said, no, you gave James and, and Tania a certain amount, you know, and she demanded her certain amount. <laughs> Well, <laughs> you know, uh, above college, you know, but uh, but we gave them that foundation to, to put the, the go forth. So we told her that we never wanted to rent places; we wanted them to buy places. And so you, Tania, you bought your first condominium at a young age as a single yeah. woman, you know, and and, and so we we gave you that foundation. That's why I like Proverbs thirteen: a good man. A good man, and this is stuff that you don't find in our community a lot of times, where 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 parents where parents can give children, you know, that nest egg to get started in life. You know, they talk about you know I can pull myself up by my bootstraps, and you pull yourself up too. No, if we can make your if we can make your your life a little easier than ours, then uh, that that's 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 my goal. Okay, that's good. That's good. What yeah. about you, Uncle John? Yeah. Raising daughters. Raising daughters. <laughs> <laughs> you took a deep breath and a pregnant pause. <laughs> I heard the breath. No, because I, like I told you at the beginning, that, that we raised three families of children. They were that far apart when I looked at uh, first raising Wanda and, and Wesley <clears throat> and what have you. And I remember during their time when I uh, Honey went to the hospital for 18 days and it was during the time of the gas shortage. So you had to have an even number tax, even an odd number of tax for gas. And honey was in our northern orthopedic of Virginia. So I, I'm running back and forth up there every night to see her and what have you. And I remember my mother-in-law the day that my mom that that honey got ready to come home. She said, John, is there anything I need to come down and help you with? And I'm going, Ms. Davis. I've taken care of these for 18 days by myself. I've gone to work every day. I got them up every day. I dressed them for school every day, got hair done, what have you, fed them every day, and brought them home in the evening and and what have you. And she said, after 18 days, is there anything I can do? But see, that's where where your mother came in because she taught you how to, how to, to, to be in a house. 
thought you think. So when it come down to there, and then then when Winnie came along, she was she was a special child all by herself. She <laughs> tell me, honey was working up the road. That is true. Honey was working up the road, and what you say about patience and mercy, Lord, mm. I thank you. Well, but anyway, uh, she was she's always been special, and uh, what have you. So the time with her, <laughs> I remember having to do her hair before going to school. You did a good job too. I don't know if I ever shared that with you, but when you were on opposite shifts, I remember you would do night shift, right? Yeah. And you put me on the bus. He was one of the best braiders. Like honestly, he could braid like on. Yeah. Did a phenomenal. I don't know if I said that to you, you know. But <laughs> kudos to the scalp because I still got my edges and everything, honey. I'm still yeah. so so with the with the three generations, you know. So when Winnie come along, and then Winnie is uh coming into her senior year, she's a junior in high school. When Danielle and Devin come along, and Danielle is eight and Devin's five, and Winnie's in a, a senior, a junior, she's in her junior year. Right. With one more year to go, and I'm looking at an empty nest syndrome, and God done blessed us with two more children. I'm going, oh my gosh! But I've never been so blessed because He taught us what I loved about it. We we wind up having to learn three generations. So Juan and Wesley came along when there was no cell phones. Mm -hmm. When it came, and we never had TVs in our children's rooms. Our children bedrooms never had TVs. And whatever Danielle and Devin comes along when there's times now for cell phones and other things. Winnie, uh, we didn't turned, have cell phones, right? Winnie, Winnie, I remember when Winnie turned 16, she said, You gave Wanda a 16th birthday party. How come you didn't give me one? No, I learned from Wanda, I, I wasn't <laughs> going back to that one again. So, my, so, sweet, my sweet 16 got canceled, but it's okay because he can still redeem himself at any time. Yes, she, truly. What happened there? She's still harboring some things. I'm, so. not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. She'll get it out of her after a while. So, the, blessing, the blessing came with the stork. Now I appreciate the stork called Delta. Uh, so, but yeah. So, what happened? We left. We, we, uh, we, we left to go to pick up Danielle and Devin on her 16th birthday, and we left her with grandmama. But what I what I tried to do to be a favor to her was to get her a permit. I think we got her to be a permit the week before we left. Uh, yeah. And what mm -hmm. happened, so that she would have, so so to make up for not being there. And I remember when uh, the bishop said about giving uh, Tanea being able to go off to get their own place. I remember when she went got ready to go to college, and she had put in a couple of years at St. Mary's down here. And then when she got ready to go to the University of Maryland, I said, baby, I can't let her go up the road with that old clunker of a car. Because I, I said, I can just imagine her breaking down up there on the beltway without days of cell phone. I mean, the cell phone was just I really wasn't about that time. So I went and uh, she was out of town. She had just graduated. She'd gone to spend a week with Wanda or something in Atlanta. And I found a brand new car on the showroom floor for her. And honey said, you're going to get it and surprise her. So when she come back, you have it? No. I said, I want both names on the title. So when she got back, she really didn't want a car payment. So she was belligerent. I was. About, but thank you for acknowledging <laughs> your belligerent. Yeah, she was, she was I, terrible. I was but, so financially savvy at the age of 17 that I was debt averse at but 17. See, but the thing was, I was the father looking at her. her, her remember the other people? Right. That's right. right. And provider, you're right. So, That's right. And, for, and for the record, and on social media world, you were right. <laughs> oh, did I get that one? <laughs> okay, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it's recorded. And, it's recorded. You can go back and listen to her say you were right. right over the, thing, the thing that I that I I glorified God for, I never got that call in the middle of the night. Dad, I'm broke down because you know young people don't stay put. Yeah. They, they're going to be somewhere. They're going to always be rolling. And we, we got up the new car so that she would not, uh, cause, I mean, cars still break down, but that's, I never had that fear. When I, when I, when she went out to the University of Maryland, I gave her that car and I released her and I was comfortable. I was absolutely comfortable that, all right, go do your thing. And the deal was when you off in the summer working, you pay the car payment. And when you in school, I pay the car payment. So yeah. that that was our deal. She was savvy, but because she didn't want to put money up, she was tight too. Did not want to yeah. waste it. On it. <laughs> so, so so the, but the old car was the engine was getting ready to go, and I could see it. Fair enough. And whatever, but I, my job was to protect her. 
And I said, all right, go, go get this car and give it to her. And she kept it until the wheels fell off. Fell her. in love. <laughs> For 21 years, I kept that car, right? That was amazing. And you know something? We did the same thing for Coray. Because when she came back from William and Mary and, and American University had, had given her this master's uh, in her math that inducted them into their master's program and paying, I think it was 38 of the 42 credits that she needed. And we couldn't put her up in Northwest DC in some off, off campus place. So that's what we did. We, we went and got her a new car so she could travel back and forth up in Northwest DC and feel secure about that. You know, take, take, taking a step back to my father, my father was the, because of him, my credit is established the way it is today because of dad. You know, we bought a new car, we got back from Vietnam and I think my mother may have co-signed with me. I think I'm not, I can't remember. But anyway, the car didn't have air conditioning in it at those times, the air conditioning was optional. And, uh, and so I went to Sears for them to install an air conditioner and I wanted to get it on credit. And of course I had no credit. And uh, the, the, the guy at Sears asked me, he says, does your father have an account? And I said, yeah, I think he does. And then they called the Philadelphia, pulled up my father's record, said he's a good payer and maybe his son will be also. And they gave me credit based on my father's track record. Mm. You know, wow. and, uh, and, and man, I said, I'll never forget that because I mean, they didn't have any credit to check me out too much, you know, because I'm, I'm new. I mean, the car that I just got is new, you know, so I never had a chance to establish, it wasn't long enough to establish credit with it, you know, but man, when Sears called Philadelphia, their home office and checked my father's record, I didn't even realize my father had an account. I just guessed mm -hmm. and they checked and realized he had an account and said he was a good payer and gave me credit based on his record. That's you know? called the ripple effect. Yeah, man, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah because I, when I, I remember when I got ready to come out of the gov out of the government, I had bought a new car, and Danielle's at Bowie, and I said I'm gonna keep it for a couple of years, and then I'm gonna, she's on campus without a car, and I'm gonna give her the car so she'll have a car on campus with. Her. So, but my my thing was always, and it was so funny because when when she got ready to come out of school and buy her own. And we always co-sign or whatever we had to do. And she passed it down to Devin. And Devin go, Dad, I can't drive that. I can't drive that. No, that's, that, that, that's a gay color. And what I, mean, I I got the car back, detailed it, new tires, did everything to it, what have you, got it all ready for him. And I said, son, you got a choice. You can either take the wheel bar or take the car, you know. So he, he finally took the car until he was able to do something of himself, but he, he rode it until he killed it. So <laughs> you know something? I'm still driving to Neil's old car. I drove I drove two of her cars. Yeah. I drove yeah. two of yeah. her cars, the Cavalier. That 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 we went to the dealer and bought that Cavalier, and Tania did not want any miles on the car at all. <laughs> and 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 the, and the car they had been using it as a demo, and uh, and it had I think maybe a hundred miles on it. And she refused the car. She refused it. The guys found the car up in Pennsylvania somewhere. And he said, we can bring it down. She said, how many, how are you going to get it here? He said, they're going to drive it down. No, they had to truck that car down for her. It had two miles on it. <laughs> going around the track, you know, and then when she went off somewhere and, uh, and, and, and she gave the car back to me, I took the car. You know, and now when they moved to Texas, I still have her 2003 Pontiac, and I'm driving that thing every day. So 2003, what is that, Mike? Is that 17, to 18 years old? 18, so when they, yeah. So when they left to go to Texas and she didn't want to take it with her, and I had that Silverado, and I'm saying I need to cheap something burn a little less gas. Right. And so, so, so I'm still driving your 2003 on the X-Thunder, if y'all the only thing automatic in it is the, is the gear shift. You got to reach <laughs> over and put the windows down. You got to you got to prime. Yeah, you got to prime it to get it started. <laughs> <laughs> when I did win this car the same way. It had no options in it. They wind up windows, push down locks, nothing, nothing left. <laughs> and, and before you get off, with somebody asked Danielle, give me the keys back to my truck. So she took. <laughs> The truck keys and she refused to give me my truck keys back. She still, she probably still got them somewhere. So the producer has put in the notes, no in all caps. Not giving the keys back. Not giving the keys. Y'all can't see that on Facebook land, but the producer is refusing to give her keys. 
to your vehicle. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm driving. I've driven two of Tania's cars. I mean, when she got rid of them, I took them and uh, and 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 retagged them. You know. So I'm still I driving. I gave my Cavalier back to my father. Yeah, you put that right back to the house. I didn't want that. I brought you. You you, <laughs> got, you, you got it. We were gonna give it away to a to a single mom or to a mom, and we couldn't get it through inspection. It had rusted under <laughs> the bottom so bad I that it, it would. It right wouldn't pass on. inspection. <laughs> so a fella came and bought it to put it in a demolition derby. Yes. And I took it out of my yard. Took, took my baby to do demolition derby. <laughs> and I so we blessed it back to the rightful owner. And I, I love my cat my convertible. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I just add that both of you ensured that your daughters knew even about cars. You made sure yes. that we knew how to yeah. change oil, how to change a tire, what mm -hmm. things sound like, where the parts are in the car, like yeah. so that we would never be taken advantage of yeah. um, with the mechanic. And even to this day, when I talk to mechanics and they sometimes just look at me like, okay, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes, because I had a father that made sure I was underneath the hood, mm -hmm. learning everything I needed to learn about vehicles. Um, and, the, and the other part of vehicles that we wanted to do, we taught them how to drive yes. locally and interstate. Talk about That's the right. Briscoe Driving School. Both yep. of them yes. put us through Briscoe Driving School. I had no problem teaching them how to drive. I wanted them to know highway so I could sit in the back, close my eyes, and be comfortable. Yep. Yep. Amen. Yes. Yes, Amen. that is true. We, we do I, have. I still don't change lanes without my signal, and I'm the only one on the road. There you go. But that's good Please. driving skills, sir. Yeah. We wish that there was, if y'all could, you know, come out of retirement for driver's ed and kind of mm. take on some of these, the, the younger generation. Yeah. Teach them, you I know. Like driving in the fast lane and holding up traffic. I mean. Oh, have mercy. The traveling lane. Get over to the, to the slow lane, not it's the called, traveling lane. It's called the passing lane. There you go, sir. See? I'm telling you, we need to bring him up for time. <laughs> I don't know past it like <laughs> I'm trying to stay out of jail because she always want me to beat somebody's kid. Okay, so there is that. <laughs> nah, I, 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 she, she calls me up to dad. I need you to stick up here wherever she is and whoever she's dealing Where, with. Whenever I'm out and I see a child acting up, I just call dad. And I just, I blame him for all fathers. Okay, he just take it. He just got to take it. And I'm like, dad. This is happening because the lack of discipline, and I'm like, "What are you going to do about it?" He don't even know who the person is. You know what I mean? But I'm like, "That." We just need to hand them grandma switch. We just should have multiplied that switch. I don't know how we should have planted it and turned it into a tree and just we soaked it in grandma Sarah switch. Yeah, <laughs> I planted trees just for that. Day. To this day, as a realtor, when I go out to houses, I can identify immediately a maple tree in a yard. <laughs> wow, it's not a shade tree. People are like that's a nice shade tree. No, that's a maple tree. That's not a shade tree. That's right. a switch There's tree. There's no shade. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little twitch. Oh, they don't know why. <laughs> Amen. So, when you want to share with your favorite memory is that involves your dad or our dad oh man so i had we both have very i think we both have the same favorite in flashback in different orders right so for yeah. me um i love the trips to florida um, where we would go as a family and uh, sometimes we would go with your family and sometimes it would just be us um and to just take those road trips as dad said you learned a lot when you're driving, what, 13, 14, 15 hours? Depends on who's driving and who's sleeping. And so um, you learned a lot in the travel. The week was amazing. Going to Disney or just being down in a totally different area, sightseeing, uh, you know, going out, enjoying different foods, um, and just having that, that family time. So Florida was amazing. Um, as a, as a favorite for me and as a flashback for me, it was it was our time fishing because for me, growing up as a tomboy, I loved being outside with dad anytime dad was outside. And so whether we were going down and crabbing or whether we were fishing, 
uh, you know, love worms, let's go, you know, and we would be out. So that was, those are my two favorites uh, in flashbacks would be Florida and fishing. Mm. Wow. <laughs> and, and mine are the same, but honestly in reverse order, um, because I did enjoy, I really truly always enjoyed and looked forward to the fishing time. Um, I think it was just because knowing that we were going to eat whatever we caught. There's that. <laughs> um, that you and mom were going to fry it up really good, um, you know, or bake it or whatever, bake rock fish. I remember that so good. Um, but just having that time of meeting you all sometimes out at the water late at night, it was like late at yeah. night, late. way past bedtime. We're up at like 11 o'clock at night. You gotta catch the tide. <laughs> yeah, that's what y'all used to always tell us. You're like, the fish are awake, the fish are hungry. That's when we go. Uh, and it was it was just fun because you all, you all made sure we knew how to fish. So you didn't just let us just go out there and just hang out um, and just talk all night. So we got each of us a reel. Each of us had our own rod and reel. Yeah. Um, and you made us cut our own worms, um, which mm -hmm. I've been before. So I've never <laughs> been <of> that. Um, <laughs> but I love, I honestly loved those times. Um, and I was not blessed to marry someone that likes to fish. Mm. So I haven't fished honestly in years. I, I did you keep our did you keep our fishing rods? Just like yeah. you I kept your bicycle. <laughs> do you have my rod? Do you have my rod though? Do you have my rod? I got I got I got your I got your ten speed or your three or your three speed and James dirt bike. I don't have your reel and rod no. In oh. fact, in fact, we're going to Saturday to go fishing. Oh, yeah. I love it. And then I'm coming time. to crash your fishing trip on Saturday. You can come and stay with on it. So nice. <laughs> <laughs> and right. then I agree with when the trips, the road trips, yeah, um, Ni Niagara were Falls and priceless. Falls and yes, Falls. going to Niagara Falls. And I love that you all made sure that we could say we saw Niagara Falls from both sides. So you yeah. let us see it from New yeah. York yeah. and then you drove us into Canada um, yeah. so that we could see it from the Canadian side. And yeah. of course, all us kids were like, it still looks the Why? same. But I love that trip, all I remember, because I was younger than you, was just yeah. water. water. <laughs> We enjoyed yeah. the Canadian side yeah, we went, a lot better yeah. than, the, than the Buffalo side. Yeah, we went we went twice. We went several, probably three times, I think, to Kent, to, to Niagara Falls at least, because we stayed on the American side once and stayed on the Canadian side another time. You know, but yeah. but yeah, but those were nice road trips, you know, and we drove two different vehicles driving up the road together at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those were great, those were great memories because you all just, well, you didn't allow us, once again, even while you were driving, you didn't allow us to goof off. So you taught us how to read a map. You taught us how to um, drive on the highway and how to respect the truck drivers and everything. Um, <laughs> so so I think I, I came to love long distance driving because of you and Uncle John um, yeah. and all the trips that y'all took us on. So. Um, Dad and Uncle John, what's your favorite or what's your funniest um, moments, fatherhood moments? <laughs> what's your funniest fatherhood moments? Oh, a lot of mercy. I know you have a lot. I have three <laughs> generations of fathers. But I, I, like I said, we got the time with Wanda and Wesley when we were traveling. And, then, and the thing was, whenever we went on Florida trips, Whoever was the oldest was allowed to take a friend. So Wanda being the oldest between her and Wesley was allowed to take a friend. Mm -hmm. So when Wanda finally came to school and dropped out, then Wesley could choose a friend. Mm -hmm. And then Winnie was so special, she couldn't choose a friend. She had two friends. <laughs> so she had to take Latoya and Win. Yes. Now, the only bad thing to that is that somebody's going to be in the middle and two friends ain't going to get along. So, but but then again, that, that philosophy, as when we got Danielle and Devin, like I said, they were such a blessing to us because we're coming now into our old, into our 
not senior years, but later years when Al three now is now out of school and gone off. And these two lack kept us young. I mean, cause Daniel and Devin, they lack sports, they lack outdoors. And I said, God, that was just a gift to me. Cause I love outdoors. And they coming from Alaska, uh, what have you, and cold wasn't a problem to them and what have you. Now the problem was the summertime. Yeah, they can't do because, that. Oh my God, them, them kids mm -hmm. lack the guy. Okay. Red, up red. For, for a summer or two, they didn't get red. They peeled. Lobster. And what have you? But but we really enjoyed. I tell you, I thank God for. So this. you don't have a funniest. You have a funniest moment per generation. Per generation. Okay. Each one of them. Each one of them had their because they were so spaced out. They were so far apart. It's ten years between you and Wanda. That's true. And then there's ten years between you and Danielle. Mm -hmm. You know, so they were so far apart. So, so it was it was awesome to me. I, I I enjoyed it all. I really did. So each one of them, what their times of enjoyment, and what have you, with Martha grew up and left, and what have you, Wesley now is a, is a is a kid, and you and him got close, yeah. and what have you. And then when, when Wesley's gone off, Wesley didn't leave. He 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 stayed in the house forever. There's that. Yeah, he stayed in the house forever until a, until a young lady came and got him. Wesley out. and I left at the same time, and we we're eight years apart. So yeah. we, we, some are late bloomers and some are fast runners. Yeah. So, uh, but each one of the three, each one of the three daughters, I mean, I just enjoyed them all. I just thank God because they, one thing about it, they kept us up with what was going on in society mm -hmm. for children. Yeah. Because during Wanda's time, and then we, when we would have dropped off and wouldn't have known what young people were dealing with, then when he came along 10 years later, then when, when he got to that age and we wouldn't have known what young people were dealing with, then Danielle them came along and it kept us fresh with what was going on in society and how to deal with it. And each each one with their own generations. Amen. Great. Hey, we had a couple. What was your funniest moment? Oh, we had a couple of events. You know, we wanted to we wanted our, we wanted to expose our children to flying. We wanted to expose them to the train. So for flying, we had my aunt, of course, my mother's sister. Her family was in Los Angeles, so we called on Eve and asked could we make a trip out of there, and uh, and so we got all the children. And I think Karee was the youngest. Well, I knew Karee was the youngest, but we we flew from D.C. to Los Angeles. And, and the fun part about the thing, we had to make a transfer in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Well, of course we flying coach, Minneapolis, St. Paul, they had overbooked the flight. So we get to sit in first class Ooh. from from Minneapolis, St. Paul into, into Los Angeles. I mean, you get the hot towels, you yeah. get to choose your meal, you get to choose what meal you eat. Not like, not like back then the cattle car, you just throw you something. <laughs> First class. That was a good overbooking. Yeah, that was a good overbooking. So we had a chance to fly in first class. <clears throat> uh, the other thing was we took a day trip uh, on, on Amtrak. The children had never been on the train. So we wanted to expose them. So we, we went up to Niagara Falls. I mean, we went up to the Statue of Liberty uh, to New York for one day. So we caught the Amtrak out of New Carrollton one early one morning. And we spent all day in New York and caught the first train back to D.C. And I think that was about three o'clock, two, two or three o'clock and caught the boat out the Statue of Liberty out there and, and, and visited that. But one of the other things was when one of my road trips was to Boston to see my wife's brother. And while we were up there, of course, Boston was famous for lobster. And so we yeah. bought 50 pounds of lobster while we were up there. We went a couple of places, you know, trying to get our price and, and they wanted to overprice it. And I told Vernon, he said, Jim, what about this? I said, no. I said, I'm I'm walking in a place to buy 50 pounds of lobster. How many people come in here to buy 50 pounds? And so I got my price. They iced it all down. We we came down from Maine because we went up to Maine to get them and dropped him off in Boston. And we came on down 95. We cooked lobster all night when we got home put it in the freezer. And the crazy part about it was the children was inviting their schoolmates <laughs> over to the house, over to the house. And they're going back telling their parents, we're over to Tania's house eating lobster. You right, know, right. You know, <laughs> didn't realize it only cost us a dollar a pound at that time. Probably. It's like chicken of the sea. Yeah, like you know, they're going back home right. telling their parents that they're over there at Tania's house eating lobster. Well, you know, at school, the kids, Think that they, their parents is super rich, <laughs> you know. But uh, but it was a couple of nice. It was it was it was nice. It was nice raising up and fun days to look back on. 
So thank and, you guys. And slightly traumatizing because coming back with 50 plus pounds of live lobster on yeah. an eight plus hour drive yeah. in the back, in the, yeah. with the cooler in between all us kids. And we're screaming because the lobsters are trying to come out of the cooler. <laughs> And of course, dad is like, I'm not pulling over, put something on top of we'll it. Sit on that cooler. Uh, yeah, we have a conversion van. I mean, Tania, we have a Did you have a cooler in your van? Everywhere we went, girl, we yes. had to have at least two coolers. Yes. And one, one was hot and one was cold or what have you. One, or yes. one was frozen and one was cooked food. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. We went to Florida and places. You, we, we already done cooked up fried chicken mm -hmm. and roast Come beef and all about this stuff. The and then the other cooler had frozen <laughs> stuff. So I mean, we we survived. <laughs> the first year we went to Florida, I said, "Babe, we can go every year, but we can't eat out. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta eat at the place." And we always got a, a hotel room that had uh, stove kitchen. and kitchenette yeah. to it. And mm -hmm. when, and from then on, man, every year we could, go, but we dragged them coolers. <laughs> That's right. Uh, 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 let's see, we, our, our conversion van, the, be, the back seat was a horseshoe shaped seat. So right. unlike, unlike the straight seat in most vans, but our back seat was a horseshoe sh horseshoe nice. shape. So, uh, so, the, so the so the cooler fit well in between, you know, in between in between the feet. I don't know how you all that those vans were the best <laughs> and how you could fill in the horseshoe and sleep as the bed, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. 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 They, it, yeah. It came. It came where it would, they gave. They gave you the extra pillows in yeah. the board. They, they closed the hole up in the middle, and the, yeah. and the pillows they covered the center section, and it became a full size bed. Yeah, yeah so, we got so, ready so. to go to Florida at midnight, honey, honey, and Winnie. Oh, wait. Honey, oh, Winnie would put the bed up. Honey, oh, that <laughs> they put the bed up when we got ready to pull up the yard. Honey and Winnie would crawl in the bed. We're gonna put the bed up. They. Eight hours later, when I pull into where some part of Georgia, Georgia or whatever, we're like, we're yeah. we, we pull in for breakfast eight hours later. Yeah. And I yeah. said, all right, it's time for y'all to drive. Yeah. yeah. That's, it was, we always left home at 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Go yeah. Home the, kids, the kids wasn't fighting one another. It was time for them to go to sleep. And when they woke up in the morning, we were well down the road, or well up the road, you know, either going to Niagara or going wherever we were well into the trip by the time they woke up in the morning. So yeah. And the funny thing morning. about it, uh, Tania and, and Bishop, I just called Florida <laughs> today and got my reservations all locked up for for the two the first two weeks of August. So where are we going? Where are we going? Wait, 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 what? Did you say we <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> I'm senior citizens. Unless you're a senior, you can't go. So we, we, we were planning to go towards Myrtle Beach and then on into Florida. We got three days before we get to Florida. So we were just seeing where we're going to be at. But uh, we're looking at going down 95 and hitting uh, some parts of South Carolina and what have you, and some parts of Georgia, what have you, then into Florida for. Hey, hey, look here, I got, I got a cooler to take with me. <laughs> No, I ain't taking no coolers no more. I don't take no coolers no more. I take, I, I take, I take the plastic now. <laughs> no, actually, I don't know. Florida, we might. August, you know, it might be on our schedule. Tania and I might be able to do the show, you know, from Florida. <laughs> that sounds really good. <laughs> on the road, huh? <laughs> Amen. All right. I don't know. So oh. we got the I got questions before we wrap up and let you all go. We have a few questions. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what advice would you give new fathers? Being this is the Father's Day edition and Father's Day is coming up. What advice would you give new fathers? Bishop's already. Beat it. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, didn't raise, three, you didn't raise three generations. <laughs> you raised three kids. <laughs> <laughs> New fathers, you know, it's, it's being there for your children. Being there, man. It's being there. It's being there. Being in their lives. Being there. That's 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 the ultimate. Being there. And 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 one thing we did as as a father, uh, when every school meeting would go, I would not send my wife. I would go. 
I would go there. And I think it was a little intimidating to the teachers because fathers were showing, a father was showing up, you know, and, uh, and, and I would go there and I would take notes. They didn't know what I was writing, but I would take notes. And, uh, and so being there in the children's lives, I wanted to be there because my father wasn't there for us at that time. And that's, that was a part of my, my wife never went by herself to a school meeting or anything. I would, I would make time and go with them and be there. And I wanted them to show, and even the principal made a statement one day. She said, Mr. and Ms. Briscoe, y'all are the exception to the rule because most of our children in here are from single parent homes, you know, and y'all are coming in here, you know, so, so it did, it, it, it was noticed. It was noticed, you know, so, so be there for your family. The same family. thing, but what the bishop just said. I remember uh, when I first opened the church up, I married, I must have been a, close to 10 couples that had been together but not married. And ones that had multiple children by different baby mamas. And I, I would tell them this choose one, marry that one and be there for the other ones. You can't be in all three, four, five houses, but you got to be there for them. Yeah. But marry, marry, make up your mind which one to marry and, and be there for the other ones. I remember one time when Devin got into a little scrap or something and they expel all, suspend, expel. They expel the other three children, but they said, because your father showed up at the meeting, we're just going to give you in-school detention. Mm -hmm. the, other, wow. the other parents never showed up to, to support their child. And I remember when Danielle went into tennis, I, I'd done all I could to be at her games at home, and especially her away games, wherever they were away, whether it was in Calvert or Charles County or wherever it was, I'd done my utmost to try to be there to support because I saw the kids that played their games there was a group of parents missing and they were of color that was missing. Other parents was there to support their children. And I said, no, I'm going to do my utmost to take off from work, wherever she going to be at to play her tennis. She's going to be able to look over at the, at the fence and see me there. And it was a very few of her games that I didn't make, but I tried my best to be wherever it was to be, a, to be there, be there. Like the Bishop said, it's the number one thing to show that you'll support. Amen. You were present. I, I have, I mean, honestly. Yes. That's a great yeah. answer. That's a great answer. And Danielle gave you all the tear. Yes, for sure. You were there at her games. You were there at my softball games. I don't know if he was at the game where, from last week with the bat. Well, Y'all go back and watch last week's episode. But Lord help I he should have been. If he wasn't there, he should have been there. <laughs> He was at the games. Dad held it down. He was there, uh, and so you know, it's it's true. Being present is a present. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah. So, what what's you all's favorite snacks? What's your favorite things to do? <laughs> Those are two different questions. Yeah. Yes, they are. Okay. Because 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 hobby wise, I enjoy fishing. I enjoy fishing, be it either on the boat, on the shore, or whatever. I mean, I mean, I got me some 14-foot rods for the shore so I can cast out, you know, being on the boat. You know, I love fishing because the water is calming and it's it's just wonderful to me. You know, in fact, I don't even need to catch fish. I can just go drown some worms. That's you it. know, I just I just enjoy the fact of being out there, you know. Uh snacks, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know. You got your snacks there with you. I know you do. Show, show us your snacks. I know you got some. That's one. <laughs> you know, the free donuts. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to lighten up on those because of the salt content and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, but 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 I love those. And and we all the we did everything now in moderation. So that's that's a big difference. Yeah. Now now, if I had a, a outside. Thing. It had to be fishing. I, I love fishing. I don't get time to do it. I miss it so much. But I love 
time to go whether you catch anything or not i want to catch something but if you don't you know it's just the fact sometimes i i can sit here and get the urge of twitching you know that something's biting the line you know and what have you but I, i'll buy a license and put them in my pocket every year and just just ride around with a fishing license not maryland driving license i mean fishing license and what have you and i love uh cheetos and and and, and uh what's it fritos now around the house during the pandemic what i learned i used to buy them in big bags and i said no we got to learn portions so i started going to bj's and buying uh the big boxes of them but they have very small bags so that way when you eat a bag a small portion all right that's it you know same thing I, same thing i do with uh drinks i i love sugar drinks but i've learned to buy sip ups because sip up is just just enough sugar and just enough drink to get uh not to overdo it so yeah. portions is, is is the thing amen yeah good That's i buy the big i buy the boxes also man <laughs> so we know we can come to you all's houses for snacks oh no we no, you can't oh, god no, no. my no, nephew no. when he was at the house no. my nephew when he was working with me at the house Honey showed him a drawer. Oh my God! You got a snack drawer. But before we had the uh, before we had the renovation, remember it was the dining room it table. Was the di yes. The dining room table was covered in snacks and what have you. So now we got a snack drawer, so it stay hid. I love it. I love it because you need a little variety. <laughs> so our our final question for y'all in the I got questions is. What did you all have as children that kids today don't have? Playtime. Mm. Outside. 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 Okay. Outside, okay. outside till, till dark. <laughs> yeah, till, till the sun come up. It doesn't make a difference, hot or not, who calls you in the house. Get outside. Yeah. So what we got, what we have, they don't have is fresh air. <laughs> So yeah. that yeah. is true. That is yeah. very, very yeah. 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 outside, day and night. Yeah, 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 yeah. You probably wanted, you probably wanted a better, better answer than that. No, that's a perfect. No. That's an honest answer, and that's actually yeah. that's actually a very true answer because yeah. it's. I I look even on the street that we live on. Yeah. there are there are some kids. There are few houses with children. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You don't see them outside often. No, no not no. at all. It's, it's a rare. You see a lot of adults out, you know, walking and exercising yeah. with the dog, but you don't see children out yeah. like we were yeah. outside. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, most of our tours that that day was outside stuff. Well, we didn't have inside stuff. We, John and I, we enjoyed putting puzzles together. The, oh, the no. thousand, the thousand I remember pieces. That. Well, the fifteen yeah, thousand puzzle you know, the 1500 piece puzzle, but we didn't have any inside games or inside toys per se, other than puzzles, you know, but, uh, but most of our stuff was outside, you know, riding a stick or pushing a tire or something crazy. Going to get the water and running down the outhouse and all that other stuff, everything was outside. <laughs> you want to get the eggs at the hen house and watching, and watching that white rooster so he didn't jump on you. <laughs> And I want to hear these stories. We got to get together when Nia gets, you know, on our coast, you know, and we'll come up and go fishing, all of us. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because right. yeah. clearly I'm going to have to buy a ride. Um, well, I mean, you had to choose yeah. a rod or a bike. So your bike's there, but your rod is not, is what you said. <laughs> and your car is there. Yeah, the car is there too. And she needs to know if she's going fishing on the boat because you don't take a 14 foot rod on the boat. There you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> There you go. All so right. we are, we're going to sum it up real briefly with Testimony Tuesday. It's about that time. I didn't know if you all wanted to participate in Testimony Tuesday, but it happens on our, you know, part of our show around this 730 time frame. So do you all have a testimony you want to share? Don't get all overly churchy on this. Give no. us a testimony. <laughs> Nothing at this time. You know, we just, I just, we just thank God for what the Lord has done you know, in our lives. Thank God for being married 50 years. Thank God for raising three wonderful children. 
you know, thank God for what you've done for us. You know, uh, they have a guy in the house working here. I'm mean, having a project done in the house. And I told the guy, look, I said, this is a long ways from outdoor toilets and kerosene lamps. Yeah. You know, so I thank God for where he brought us from. But also thank God for keeping us level headed, not to not to be uppity or whatever, you know, to, to, to have something, but still appreciate the good, appreciate God, you know, and, and, and whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the young men in my neighborhood uh, that, that moved in that didn't know us growing up, from my house to my mom's house, there is an old building. And they would look at me driving the cars that I now have or driving or living in the house. And, and uh, they were at the age of 17 and mid 20s and early 30s that were living with their parents. And they said, but look at Mr. Briscoe, he got all that stuff. And I would point to the house that they could see that was just about growing up. I said, that's where I grew up at. I grew up in that with no running water. No, I remember the house that we lived in had no electric. It had, I remember when it was water. I remember the other house when you, when you, when one a time, one a time, the water buckets with trees in the house. Trees in the house you had to get up in the morning and break the ice in the, in the bucket in the house yep. to, to, to to warm water up to wash your face and hands or do whatever you was doing in the house so when you look at where we are today look over there in the woods and that's where that's where i was until i was 18 years of age until i left to go to computer school or go off into the military and, and uh at 19 or what have you so that's where I was. There's still no water in that old building no. and what have you. So you look at a person where they are, but that's not where they came from. Yeah. That's yeah. good. That's good. Ooh, you when, know, what about you? didn't forget where we came from. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's real funny. Right. What about you, when? I got a I got 15 million testimonies, but my testimony is that my father is here with me. If I could just sum up, that's that's my gratitude. The pandemic puts things in perspective. There was people who lost loved ones, and uh, I'm just so grateful, you know, with my dad and my mom and the age that they are, that they are physically present with me here. So Great. simple as that. Yeah. Truly and healthy. Absolutely. We are both ready to eat. We're going to go eat afterwards. <laughs> wow. We, we are both blessed with parents that are healthy. Um, and yeah, that that is enough all in itself to be thankful for. To be thankful for. That's it. Um, so yeah, I, I, will, I will second that testimony for this week. So this thank is you, Dad. Yes. And Uncle John for this time. Thanks for the invite. Everybody, we will have them back on with their wives. Mm. In it, the fall. In the fall. In the fall. No, nah, that's anniversary time. Yeah, that's around the anniversary happen. time. <laughs> around the an, around the wedding anniversary times, because they both have anniversaries of I think less than 30 days apart or something like that. So yes. I yes, we will have to have them back with, with our mom. So um, next week, when next week's show, what we got? We have flashback gumbo coming next week. I am so, so excited. This will be uh, every six or seven episodes. We do a flashback gumbo. And it's just a wonderful recap of all of the prior episodes to just catch you up where we are let you know really kind of the, the nuggets and the takeaway. But if you don't want to miss that show, and if you'd like to binge, all of our shows are still posted. Go watch all of them. So next week, we'll see you on the Flashback Gumbo. Yeah, yeah. And uh, feel free, by all means, the best gift you can give on Father's Day is wisdom and knowledge and understanding. So if you don't have a gift for somebody, but but you want to bless them with something, share this episode with them. Let them hear some wisdom from tonight. 
You can keep posting your comments if you're watching this on the replay or your questions. Um, we'd love to engage and hear your feedback. And so until next week, everybody, just keep listening. Amen. Take care. See you next Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Eastern. Yes. Thank you. Listen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Good to see y'all. Amen.